स्वेच्छा केसरिण स्वच्छ स्वच्छायासीतेन्दव त्रायंतांबो मधुरीपो प्रपन्नाछेदो नखा स्टार्टिंग विथ ध्वनियालोक ध्वनियालोक इज अ वर्क रिटन बै आनंदवर्धन let me first get uh, uh, out of the way his life and all that small small details uh, he is the son of nona not much is known about him there is a particular shloka which says that he was uh, um, born during the or he lived during avanti varma's rule and avanti varma king avanti varma of kashmir he belongs to kashmir so which was uh, uh, between 855 and 884 ad मुक्तामणि शिवस्वामी कवि आनंदवर्धन प्रथम रत्नाक अगात साम्राज्य आवंतिवर्मण साम्राज्य आवंतिवर्मण सो आवंतिवर्मण साम्राज्य आनंदवर्धन प्रथम अगात सो हि बिकेम फेमस आनंदवर्धन बिकेम फेमस ड्यूरींग रूल ऑफ आवंतिवर्मा हु वॉज अ किंग ऑफ कैश्मीर देर वर् मेनी kings many alankarika many poets during that king's rule he was a very great uh, patron of arts and everything so he flourished during that time which is around the mid 9th century anandavardhana has also written a lot of uh, works dhanyaloka is not his only work is uh, uh, even in the dhanyaloka he quotes from his own vishwampana leela arjuna charitam uh, tattvalokam dharmottari vivrtihi Uh, he's written a chitra kavyam called uh, devi shatakam his magnum opus is dhanya loka or sahridaya loka it's also known as sahridaya loka sahridaya hridaya loka kavya loka these are all the different names by which we know of dhanya loka in history as such so there uh, in the sense many different alankarikas have mentioned Uh, uh lines or karikas from dhanya loka but saying sahrid uh, yatha sahridaya loke athava na so we pick out these things from internal references uh, found in different uh, um texts okay <clears throat> next is uh, a, a small uh, 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 idea about uh, sahitya shastram the word sahityam itself sahitasya bhavah is sahityam so shabda artha how the two of them um, uh, stay together and how they embellish a work and that shabda artha uh, sahitatvam is presented in a kavyam in a beautiful manner so it is called kavya shastram you can say sahitya shastram or you can also say alankara shastram it generally refers to lakshana grantha lakshya granthas are lakshya texts are those la, ka, the kavyam as such written by the kavis are lakshya grantha and the works that explain the lakshana explain how a kavyam should be is called a lakshana grantha what was the necessity for bharata to start off with natya shastra as such if you look at that there were a lot of kavyams there were a lot of practices that were present around the time when bharata wrote his natya shastram we always start with natya shastram because that is the uh, main source and the oldest source of uh, uh, lakshana grantha for us so anything and everything should start off with natya shastram hmm? so uh, there were many kavyams that were present and to explain the gamut of kavyas that are there to to categorize them to understand the the value of each and everything we needed some yardstick that yardstick was absent at that point of time to understand the variety that is there see some people are uh, uh, look at two three kavyams they say oh this is beautiful this is wonderful whereas uh, the same kavyam when it is when other people look at it they feel it is not as beautiful as what these people are saying so there should be some commonality for us to understand which is a sat kavyam and which is an asat kavyam that discrimination is something people found that it was Uh, um tough for them to generalize and say what is a satkavya and what is an asatkavya 
So that gave rise to a lot of Lakshana Granthas. So you find as and when the number of Kavyas increase the, uh, and uh, the, the number of aberrations happen, you, ha you need some framework to put them inside. The Lakshana, Lakshyam always preceded Lakshana. So Lakshya Grantha or Kavyas always preceded or they, they have more importance than Lakshana Grantha. That, that is the creativity of the poet that he expresses in the form of a Kavya. And the, the duty of a Lakshana Granthakara is to explain what is present there. That's all. Or try to say, you know, even though it is like this, it, 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 it can be categorized as a dosha. That is his point. So dosha, dosha, guna. So the different parts of a, a Kavya came rise. Okay. If you look at the Satkavyam and Asatkavyam, so what determines Asatkavyam? What determines an Asatkavyam? For that, we need to look at the different parts. So what are the different parts which contribute to a Kavyam being portrayed as a good one or a bad one? Or it has to be rejected. There you find a lot of people started uh, analyzing the Charutva Hetu. Charutva, that which contributes to the beauty of a Kavya. Again, when you start analyzing what contributes to the beauty of it, naturally there will be a difference of opinion. For simple matters, we have a lot of difference of opinion. So imagine something which someone has written and it is an abstract form which gives you an enjoyment. Each person has a different opinion about it. So the number of different opinions about what contributes to the beauty of the Kavyam also were, uh, were a lot of it. On a um, um, holistic level, they were looking at two things. One is Saundarya Vishayaha, the other is Aswada Vishayaha. Saundarya Vishaya is something which is extrinsic, which adds an embellishment, outer embellishment to a Kavyam. Intrinsic value is the Aswadanata. What makes it enjoyable? Being beautiful is something different. What makes it enjoyable is a step further. And it is actually a personalized, uh, uh, let's say, uh, experience for everybody when it moves to the Aswadhanata level. So people were able to explain the in extrinsic beauty, but they could not, when it came to the intrinsic beauty, that is where people started differing. So uh, Rajashekara uh, uh, comes up with this uh, format, with this image of how Kavyam is like a Purusha. Purusha, any human being. Puri, Shete, uh, Puhu is uh, Shariram. So for every Purusha, every person, uh, what are all the attributes that give him that extrinsic quality, extrinsic beauty. And what is it that is an intrinsic value, but that has an intrinsic value in him? So they started enlisting things. Rajshekara mainly uh, uh, put it into a nice image. So he said Shariram, Shariram, just like how a person has a body, the same way Kavyam also has a body. What is the body made up of? It has Shabdam and Artham. It is like Vagartha Viva Sampurtu Vagartha Pratipatthaye. You need the Shabdaha, Shabda, uh, and that Shabda Pratipatthaya Arthaha Avashyaka. Both the Shabda and Artha contribute to the body of the text. That is your Shabdam and Artham. So the placement are done. Now this Shariram has to have a Saundarya Vishayaha. What are all the Saundarya Vishayas that you can do for it? First, outward beauty, which is Haradi Alankaraha. You have a lot, you wear bangles, Haram, uh, um, um, Anguliyakam, and all these different, different types of Alankaras you put. The same way, when you have to beautify a Kavyam, you have to beautify the Shariram, which is outside, that is Shabda and Artha. Shabdasya Alankaraha, Arthasya cha Alankaraha, which is again only extrinsic. So Shabda Alankaraha and Artha Alankaraha came about. Shabda Alankara is uh, that which is only, which does not depend on Artham at all. And it just beautifies the uh, uh, poetry or Gadhyam. In Gadhyam, you will find more of uh, Shabda Alankara. Artha Alankara, 
is you can bring about a variety of arthalankara in poetry than in gadyam gadyam you will be left with just a few like krupaka upama and all that so arthalankaras beautify the artham part of the shariram in a kavya next you he proceeds to another level which is the guna guna is something intrinsic at the same time it is not the uh, parama aswadanata is not there the greatest uh, enjoyment is not derived from the guna but it it uh, enhances the uh, atma portion what is that so when a person has parakramatvam he may not have the body that contributes to it but he will have a sahasatvam that is there a, a, an utsaha that is there and he can dis display his uh, parakramam that is made up we say it is a mind quality it is not the body quality he may not have uh, uh, you know biceps and abs and all that but he may have that uh, uh, strength of mind which is uh, 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 which is like shaurya dana dairya danam means you may not have wealth in your uh, treasury but still you feel like donating whatever you get you may have your only meal in hand the first meal of the day and yet if someone comes and asks you for a meal you will feel like giving it that is your intrinsic quality that is the gunam that you have that is an inside quality it is not an outside thing whereas if a person who has three meals a day every day and he has no problem about it he has a lot of money in his uh, bank and yet he gives 1 rupee that is not uh, uh, a great gunam a person who has only 2 rupees gives 1 rupee that is a 50% donation there that is where it has value that those type of gunas when you look at a kavyam it is the madhuryadi gunah whether the words are katu or not whether the artha is katu or not the madhuryam gunam etc should be in accordance to the rasa that it is trying to portray which is the which gives embellishes the aswadana yogyata in a person in a kavya the the same way he has gunam he has a lot of alanka alankriti etc anga vinyasah if your hand is not in the place where the hand should be or the leg is not in the place where it should be uh, there is no symmetry there is no um, whether there is symmetry or not it placement is wrong like a kabandha uh, kabandha asura uh, think of all those uh, asuras they may have all the guna that we are talking about they may be wearing necklaces and uh, 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 rings and all that but still anga vinyasaha nasti chet that portion is uh, in a kavyam its parallel is sanghatana you will be reading about all of these I, I, uh, when we come to second udyota or third, third udyota in uh, uh, dhanyaloka so i'm just giving a small um, um, introduction for that so sanghatana is equal to anga vinyasaha how the words are connected to each other how the artham is connected to each other and how it reflects the guna how it is contributing to rasa now the next portion is where people were had difference of opinions what is the atma atma in a purusha atma itself is an abstract thing as far as purusha goes there are people who don't accept the presence of atma people say that shariram is atma people say that gunam is atma manas is atma pranam is atma so even in the philosophical traditions of darshanas we find that people have a difference of opinion as far as atma goes that is where it starts off right in the same Uh, a quality is carried over in kavyam also where people are fighting over what can be the atma of the kavyam what is the atma aswadana yogyata bhavitavyam the moment i i experience that that will give me a satisfaction that is your atma uh, according to advaitins atma swarupa is ananda swarupa so the, the moment you realize that you are that atman and nothing else is permanent if you look at the impermanence of everything else around you and you look at the permanence of atma then you realize that that is the only source of anandam and that is ananda itself ananda swarupa that sort of a bliss or that sort of a quality how will you get it what will give you in a kavya right through we find uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, alankaravadins so you have reeti 
ವೃತ್ತಿ ವಕ್ರೋಕ್ತಿ ಸೊ ಭರತ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಮಚ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ರಸ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೈನ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಏಟ್ ರಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೈನ್ ರಸಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಸೇ ಇಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಆತ್ಮ ಆಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕಾಪ್ಯ ಬಟ್ ಬಾಮಹ ಉದ್ಭಟ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲಂಕಾರ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇ ಹಾವ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಲಂಕಾರ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ and they have highlighted the different types of alankaras dandi also even though he may talk about reeti vakrokti and everything else all of those people who existed before anandavardhana they were either completely against dhvani or they said that alankara is the best if you looked at vamana he says reeti reetratma kavyasya his uh, contention was that but bamaha goes to uh, um yeah i'll come to that later so bamaha udbhada and uh, dandin were all alankara vadins there are some six types of six schools of dhvani you have alankara reeti uh, dhvani rasa uh, vakrokti and auchityam the, uh, those are the six ty- schools of sahitya shastram they say in that the people who are completely different from the dhvani are alankara vadin reeti vakrokti etc whereas dhvani auchityam and uh, one more thing that i said so these are all more connected to uh, uh, with each other hmm? uh, the, the the schools that existed before dhvani were alankara vadins and reeti vadin the schools that existed after dhvani school were vakrokti auchitya etc now ananda vardhana is like a you know madhyamani nyayena he he stands in the middle where he propounded for the first time in a in a very clear manner the people before him talked about dhvani but they did not work out the details they had just broadly explained that oh yes yes there is a dhvani anandavardhana himself says that it's not a new fresh concept for me it is something that i have taken from the vyakaranas because prathamohi vidyamsa vyakarana so uh, that to be will address later so he it is not a fresh concept that is what anandavardhana says but many people before him have not explained it if they have even mentioned that dhvani exists they have only said that no it is something which we cannot describe at all anirvachaniya uh, uh, you can only close your eyes and experience it that is not going to solve anything that's not going to teach anybody what is dhvani or to recognize dhvani you just have to be in that that small circle if you are not let into that inner circle you will not be able to understand the dhvani at all that's not how it is so ananda vardhana wanted to lay down the uh, 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 bare threads of what dhvani is and how it can be proven that was his uh, goal it was uh, uh, i should say that no, no, it was not ananda vardhana who who is the foremost of the dhvani school in fact he gave the line and he said he you can you can explain what is dhvani but the person who took it a step further is abhinava gupta who has also written nati darpana uh, bharata's uh, and a um, commentary on uh, bharata's natya shastra and he is uh, he has written a commentary on dunya loka called lochana without lochana it's uh, impossible to understand the import of ananda vardhana so in many places you will need the help of lochana the help of abhinav gupta to understand uh, uh, what ananda vardhana tries to talk to us about the dhvani concept hmm? the next after Ab- abhinav gupta you find mamata acharya coming up because before him it was vakrokti and uh, uh, um, who is that uh, vakrokti jeevitam is a kuntaka wrote vakrokti jeevitam and he said that this is the uh, best uh, uh, text and vakrokti is the uh, um, uh, atma of a kavya the way you twist the words normal conversation happens Uh, if if the same normal words are twisted in a more beautiful manner and presented to the audience it gains a beauty and it gains aswadanata it is appreciated so he was not far off it's actually a very beautiful concept vakrokti but that turn of phrase is not enough you know whether the turn of phrase is there or not you still derive enjoyment from certain shlokas why is that that is where our dhvani concept comes in and it becomes the atma of uh, kavya 
when a lot of uh, people started disproving uh, abhinav gupta mammadacharya came at the end of 11th century to re establish the concept of dhvani in his kavya prakasham the rest of them just followed suit and jagannatha pandita who, who was probably the uh, greatest or the la- and the last contributor for sahitya shastra he also spoke about dhvani but for him nothing else other than rasa dhvani exists alankara dhvani and all that is okay but rasam rasam is the um, uh, concept that he tried to uh, um, highlight the same with vishwanatha he also said vakyam rasatmakam kavya that was his concept so each one tried to explain what the atma of a kavyam was that is where you find the branches of sahitya shastram uh, uh, becoming different Well, the text on hand is dunya loka as i said there are different uh, uh, names for it there are four udyotas for this udyota is the name he has given for a chapter uh, it's uh, my sir would always say you know my professor would always say it is like a thesis format you can't look at kavya prakasham and come here and say you know where are the divisions of kavyam where is the uh, definition of a kavya what is the hetu of it? he doesn't go by that because anandavardhana's first and foremost uh, task on hand was to prove a theory when you have to prove a theory your text should be in the format of a thesis so he starts off in the first utyota by saying that there are different types of misnomers about or misconceptions about dhvani this was some people say that it the it dhani does not exist some people say it is only lakshana some people say that uh, uh, you know it is it exists but uh, you can't explain it he he says he attacks each and every purva pakshi he starts off his text with a purva pakshi okay uh, and he says i will i will uh, uh, establish the theory of dhvani i will explain the theory of dhvani and then he moves on to the divisions of dhvani is a, he in the third udyata he starts off with how each and every part of a shabda and an artha can give rise to dhvani it can suggest dhvani uh, uh, that and then he talks about at the end he says how in the mahakavyam and even in mahabharata and ramayana you find this how can we avoid plagiarism if we take the ideas of mahakavi and we try to portray it in our own manner what is creativity and all that how can we produce good poetry in such a manner that the audience of the sahridaya is able to enjoy that rasa so that is the format of his uh, uh, text with four udyota so this is not a compendium or this is not like a dictionary uh, or a rule book this is just a, a book or a, a, it's a thesis there is no other way for me to uh, explain it the format of the text is inside you will have karika then there is a vritti bhaga there is uh, then udaharana padyam the karika and the vritti bhaga there are disputes again that uh, anand vardhana did not uh, uh, write the vritti he wrote only the karika but uh, it's the most popular belief is that he wrote both the karikas and the vritti bhaga karika are in the form of shloka and it is also written in the chandas of shloka the shloka is the name of a chandas meter the vritti bhagam is written in gadya he also takes up udaharana padyam that is where he mentions um, vishma bana leela and all that uh, there are about uh, the oldest commentary is chandrika the most popular commentary is lochanam which is been written by abhinav gupta acharya there is a tika balapriya which is fairly fine taravati i have mentioned modern uh, uh, tikas also which is very good the hindi tika taravati is very uh, uh, simple uh, it's also not simple in the sense the language is simple uh, the depth of information that is there in that vyakhyanam it's not a tika it is more like a vyakhyanam where he has explained very beautifully some uh, concepts which are Uh, even written in lochanam also it is very difficult to understand dididi is a more common thing which is written in the early uh, 20th century um that is more approachable and uh, uh, 
uh, it'll be easy for students to write that i will give that link in the um, later i'll send the link for vdt which will be easier to understand and write if you are preparing for exam then vdt is the perfect uh, text to uh, study lochana the language of lochana can be a little bit tougher than uh, uh, anything the word uh, dhvanya loka itself the meaning of it is dhvanehe alokaha as i told you it is in the form of a thesis and so he is trying to show us alokaha is a prakasha dhvanehe prakasha yatra bhavati oh sorry um ah dhvanehe alokaha in the sense he is trying to show light on the concept of dhvani what is this dhvani i have been talking of dhvani dhvani etc you might have studied it in kavya prakasham and everything but lochanakara gives us a uh, this is the uh, what do i say a doubt that a lot of students would have as to what dhvani is is it only the artham or is it the kavyam or is it the vachaka shabda vachya artha what is it there is a doubt but it, the dhvani word itself has so many meanings uh that it is difficult to understand and at every point we have to clearly analyze and with clarity understand what the meaning of the word dhvani is at that point contextually okay in the um, loka vyavahara we find that dhvananam is shabda and uh, any type of sound that we hear which can be either Uh, um in the form of a song or in the form of an instrument or uh, even uh, tapping on the table there is a sound that also is a shabda or dhvani varna roopaha is also dhvani so the first two parts the vadya or the shabda it is a, uh, a um, prakrita shabda in the sense uh, uh, it is an uh, indistinguishable sound there is no um words associated with it whereas varna roopa can also be a dhvani okay uh, there are words which can be recognized recognizable words can also be called as dhvani unrecognized sound is also called dhvani even in vadya shabda and geeti roopa ha the words can be see i may not be a sagradaya i may not understand when a mridangam is playing but there may be other people who can say oh no no see he is playing ta tha dha din din da whatever in tabla or the kitta what are those words there was words don't come from the instrument as such we may not understand those but the people who are in that uh, uh, profession will understand the meaning of that word it has it is not an unrecognized sound i may not recognize it because i don't know anything about mridanga i know about veena if i if maybe someone is playing something some song i can immediately say oh they are playing manavyalake how do you understand i can only hear toin toin no <laughs> some people don't understand the sound that comes from it so that recognized sound is also there unrecognized you just hear a chatter some noise taratvaadi dhihetuhu dhvanihi that is also there taratvam means uh, a loud pitch a loud noise is also dhvani another uh, place where we talk about is spotaha is a word uh, the concept of spota itself will it's a huge topic and if i just touch it it's like opening a big parcel here uh, so i will try not to go too deep into spota spota is a, take it as a concept of vyakarana where that uh, spota is um um spota actually means something which bursts bursts open so the moment you hear a word there is some image that bursts open in your mind right when i say uh, ashvaha you may think about maybe uh, surya says aptashwaha haridashwaha there are oh how would the dark horses be you may be thinking about uh, uh, black beauty which is a novel that i read when i was in fourth grade something some sort of an image that comes into your mind immediately that is spotaha 
the moment you hear some word the image that comes into your mind is spota so spotasya grahane hetuhu prakrutah dhvanihi ishyate what he says here is completely vyakarana uh, uh, concept he says prakrutah dhvanihi any word any shabdam that you hear you can hear the sound of a coil and uh, the moment you hear the sound of a coil it is not a Uh, a distinguishable sound but still the, the the image of a cuckoo will come to your mind that also is spota hmm? so these are all the different laukika vyavahara of uh, laukika arthaha for dhvani in dhvani siddhantam you must have studied in kavya prakasham where you have the vachaka shabda vachyartha lakshaka shabda lakshyartha and vyanjaka shabda vinjartha vyangyartha in lochana abhinav gupta gives these following definitions for dhvani he says dhvanyate everything according to yaska every word has its own etymology it can be traced to a verb the same way he also traces the word dhvani to the verb and says dhvanyate iti dhvanihi dhvanyate vachaka shabda it the the word which is responsible for giving rise to uh, uh, an image in our mind i don't want to use dhvani now i don't want to use that word here but, but that gives rise to uh, when i say gato astam arkah the sun is setting the moment you hear that word that is a vachaka shabda that which is just a primary word that is said that primary word is also called dhvani because it gives rise to something in our mind that is vachaka shabda dhvanyate anena next is dhvanyate anena ite vachyartah the meaning that is there just gato astam arkah gatah arkah astam gatah the word itself is not going to give rise any meaning the meaning is there oh which means the sun has set there is a a uh, ball of fire in the sky you you get give the the words give rise to a meaning in our mind which is the primary meaning that is the sun has set i am talking of the samskritam word and when i say the sun has set it is not the vachaka shabda i am talking about the meaning that you you uh, think about in your mind so dhvanyate ane now from that meaning you are concluding you are saying okay i should go and light a lamp in the puja grah hmm? so that it gives rise the vachyartha gives rise to a dhvani so dhvanyate anena vachyarthena dhvanyate iti vachyartho api dhvani next is dhvanyate anaya iti vyaparah the process with which you know gato asta markah and then i go light a lamp there is a process involved in that what is that process that is called vyanjana vyapara what is that process that goes on in my mind oh the sun has set which means it is time to light a lamp in the uh, temple so let me go and do it so the process is every time i have seen the sun setting i have seen my mother do that my uh, grandmother do it it is a custom that we follow it is a tradition that we follow in our family that process that is there it may be a broken down process or it can be like this you may not even go through that process in your mind uh, in a in a series kramatvena that will not that may not happen it can also happen within a moment you just immediately look at the sky and then go to the uh, puja grah and do it whatever it is there is a process involved there that process is also called dhvani next is dhvanati iti dhvanihi that which is Uh, um understood that which is understood that which is suggested which is your vyangyartha that that can be rasa that can be alankara that can be a vastu i can just understand that it is a time for uh, uh, meditating it is a time for uh, you know going and doing my homework there are so many vyangyarthas that can arise and that vyangyartha is also called dhvani now in the kavyam dhvanyate and dhvanati that which is uh, um okay dhvanyate vyanjana vyaparah gives rise to a vyangyartha dhvanati 
Dhanyate is actually uh, uh, passive voice, right? And Dhanati is that which is suggested, that which arises in our mind. Dhanyate means with, with this process, uh, we arrive at something in our mind. Dhanyate na teriya padutta padigiradu. Dhanati ingarche terigiradu. And the passive active purunjikadu manasla. You understand? Hmm? So, Dvanyate in Garche, in a Gondi Vyaparam Mulyamaga, in a Kamanasala Unda Thondra. So, the process itself which gives rise to something, something is give, uh, something is suggested by something. Adu Unda. That is the fourth one. Something is that which is suggested itself is Dvani. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so there are three things that are involved in giving rise to the Vyangyartha. All three can be Dvanyate. Dvanyate uh, uh, Anena. If I say just Dvanyate Anena, Dvanyate Anena for both, then you will get confused. That is why I just removed the Anena for the first one. To, to remember that there are two things which are in Pullinga. One is the Shabda and the other is the Artha. There is no specificity with ha one having Anena and the other not having Anena. Okay. Yeah. Huh? The, the, the three contributing factors for arriving at Vyangya Artha are Vachaka Shabda, Vachya Artha, Vyanjana Vyapara. You call it as Vyanjaka Shabda and Vengyartha, Vyanjaka Shabda, only when you arrive at the Vengyartha, at the basic level, you are only first looking at the primary meaning, without which you cannot even arrive at the Vengyartha. So the primary word is your first Dhanyate, with which you come uh, arrive at a suggestion. Okay. Hence Puriyar. that Vachaka Shabda. Puriyar da? Puriyar. So Angani and Purunjikana. Purunjikana. Uh, confused side me, both are right. the same. Uh. How do we know the distinguish? And oh, even God. the other one, Anayan, the Sri Lingat Nala, and it gives that illusion. Different, Silya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, then this is different. Why is these two, these two same? And pretty much, you know, you can't get a lot of Even if you have a lot of money, you can't get a lot of money. So, you can't get a lot of money. So, you can't get a lot of money. See, if I had just said, Don't get a lot of money, you can't get a lot of money. You can't get a lot of money. You can't get a lot of money. Is there a difference between the two? Ne? So, yeah. There is a, anything that contributes to the Vengyartha, all three are, can be called as, referred to as Dvani. Adhe Dvanati is that which is suggested, which is your Vengyartha. Uh, next one, Dvanyate Asmin. Now here the Vibhakti is, is giving me one respite here. So Dvanyate Asmin, if anything is being suggested in a work, in a body of work, that body of work is also called Dvani. And that Dvani is an Uttama Kavya. Dvanyate Asmin iti Uttama. In Kavya Prakasha, the first two lasa you will see uh, Adama Kavya, Madhyama Kavya and Uttama Kavya. And Uttama Kavya is called Dvani, Madhyama Kavya is called Guni Bhutam, Adama Kavya is called Chitra Kavya. So that Uttama Kavya is also called Dvani. Now is this a new concept? As I told you, uh, Ananda Vardhana says it is not a new concept. Kavya Syatma, he starts off with Kavya Syatma, Dhani Riti Budaihi, yes, Samamna the Purvaha, Samamna the Purvaha, that which has been said before, Avichinena Pravahena, Taihi, Eta Duktam, Vinapi, Vishishta Pustaka Vinaya Shat, the explanation that Lochanakara gives for Samamna the Purvaha is this. This is Budaihi, Pratamohi, Vidwam Saha, Vayakaranaha, Budhaha, a person who can. We called as a Buddha or an intelligent person is only a Vayakarana because they are the worst people who show us the path to uh, uh, appreciating everything. If we even have to understand a Kavyam, that is without the help of a Vayakarana, without the base given, a, given to us by a Vayakarana, we cannot even get into a Kavyam. How would we understand the meaning of each and every word? So they are the first people that we have to uh, sh show our appreciation to. 
and he takes even for dhvani the concept of dhvani he takes vyakarana and he says the the concept of sporta is the first uh, step to uh, uh, giving us an idea about dhvani hmm? uh, don't try to understand sporta as is equal to dhvani it is completely opposite actually in the sense what the vyakarana says as far as dhvani is not suggestion the sporta that they say is just when you hear the word gauhu the image of the uh, cow comes in your mind that image that artha shabdasya arthaha eva sporta that they call it as dhvani they don't say the word dhvani they just say sporta hmm? which in our kavyam is only the first level of understanding which is your primary meaning and a primary word and meaning so the concept he has taken that idea behind that how do you understand the meaning of a word the moment a word is said there is an image that arises in our mind and we understand the meaning of that word that concept that bare concept is what is taken by anandavardhana and he uses it in something called suggestion he says this what the vaya he doesn't even clearly state that what vyakarana has said is only a primary level he doesn't say that but without saying it he has just you know acknowledged that we have to uh, 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 you know offer our namaskarams to him first to vyakarana's first and then let's move on to our concept he has not even gone into that uh, uh, area at all it's only later people who have written about uh, dhvani and the uh, the connection between sporta and dhvani have highlighted by saying that the suggestion in poetry or dhvani in poetry is completely different from sporta in grammar for for the grammarian shabdasya arthaha eva sportaha kintu atra shabdasya arthaha is only vachya arthaha we can call it dhvani that's okay but it is still not the atma of a kavya it is only the vyangya artha which is the dhvani okay uh, let's move on to the, the, all of these you know yes samam nata purvaha and what the concept of dhvani is i don't want to go too much into it because we will be dealing with that in the first utyotam about what dhvani is and what it depends on and everything so let's move on to the mangala shlokam uh, otherwise we may not have much time to deal with it swachha kesarinaha swachha swachhaya ayasita indavah prapannarthi chido trayantambo maduripoho prapannarthi chido nakah hmm ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದಾತ್ಮಕ ಮಂಗಳ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಾತ್ಮಕ ಆರ್ ವಸ್ತು ನಿರ್ದೇಶ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ವಾಚ್ಯಂ ಈಸ್ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದಾತ್ಮಕ and uh, uh, as you go you will see that in this shloka he gives vastu dhvani alankara dhvani and rasa dhvani is present in this shloka uh, let's look at the meaning of it swachha kesarinah madhuri poho nakah madhu madhu nama rakshasah tasya ripuh vishnu uh, vishnoh nakah vah prayanta let the nails of uh, vishnu protect you all now what is that uh, uh, how is vishnu here not any vishnu but he is talking of the drisamma avatara swachha kesarinah he takes his uh, avataram uh, not because of by force or anything not because uh, uh, someone has it is someone else's wish it's not uh, prakhlada never asked for uh, drisamma to come in that drisamma avatara vishnu to come in A, a form of half lion and half man that was not his wish so vishnu decided to take this avatara okay so swachha kesarinah out of his own interest out of his own wish uh, even in uh, you know in upanishad when when the brahma swarupam decided to create this world satvapo tapyata he just was thinking bahusyam praja yeyeti i wish to Uh, you know create all of this world let me let me become many 
the it's a very simple i'm only talking of the surface level of meaning it is not the meaning that you need to know there is so much in it behind what it what it means is essentially leelaya swechaya uh, out of his own uh, yadrcha he just created that form and he came in that form kesari kesaraha asya kesaraha asya santi iti uh, a lion so out of his own interest he took the form of a lion who had taken the lion form and then uh, madhu ripoho he is the enemy of madhu protected the world uh, uh, by killing the asura madhu his nakha ha how are the nakha there are two adjectives here swachha swachhaya ayasita indavaha ayasita indavaha they have the nakha have upset the uh, um, moon they they have made the moon very upset because it is uh, resembling the moon <coughs> imagine the crescent moon and the nakha the top portion of the nakha is also in the shape of a crescent moon so <coughs> because of the swachha swachhaya Uh, the the prakasha that comes out of the nakha is swachha it's very pure and the, because it resembles the moon the moon is very upset with this it feels that uh, uh, we'll come to why he says ayasita later the next is the next adjective for nakha ha is prapanna arti chida chinatti prapannanam artihi chinatti Uh, the, it removes the sufferings of all the people who come and uh, bow to him so nakaha the nails of uh, uh, nrisimha removes the arti arti is suffering of prapanna those who have come in sharanagati to the lord prapanna arti chidaha nakaha vaha trayanta seems a very simple shlokam but the propriety with which you know the auchitya that he uses for each and every that's a i was uh, very enamored by the concept of auchitya when i was teaching auchitya sir the the propriety with which he uses each and every word swetcha kesarinaha so out of his own interest his own desire to kill that uh, asura and protect the world parama karunikah vishnu you can understand that from that right and it's also he is not uh, um, in a in a different level he is not bound by prarabdha karma sanchita karma punya papa palan and all that he is not bound by karma here that is why it is swetcha whereas we cannot do anything by swetcha there is no free will here at any point people will talk about free will and fate the tug of war between free will and fate nothing of that sort uh, uh, my professor would say you know ashuveshu samavishtam shuveshveva avatarayet as you find yourself moving towards gravitating towards the bad thoughts you try forcibly to push yourself into good ones you may try that will just become a samskara which will prompt you at a certain point to push you into the good path you will have to keep on making that effort whether you think you have the free will or not never think about it is what it say so here is vishnu does not even have to depend on karma for acting it is not out of uh, prarabdha karma that nrsimha avatara uh, happened and hiranyakashipu's death happened it is hiranyakashipu's uh, 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 um prarabdham that he had to die like this so swetcha krishnu karma paratantra na so that is your vastu dhvani here you understand from that swachha swachhaya ayasita indavaha now uh, this chandra is very upset with the nakaha because that is also in crescent shape i am also in crescent shape but the nakaha the nails have that capability of removing the suffering which i don't have see hindu all it does is it just uh, uh, um, uh, rises and sets there is nothing that it does in fact as a you know uh, in a shringara uddipakam and it only uh, intensifies the vipralamb shringara being an uddipaka for shringara it is not it does not remove the suffering of anybody only the nayika and the nayaka come, coming together will remove the suffering chandra only contributes more to the suffering whereas here the nakaha swachhaya chandrasya chhaya iva chhaya that you can say or swasya chhayaya nakaha swachhaya because of their own prakasha 
they are able to upset the hindu because they the, the nakaha are more beautiful than it was look at than the hindu than the crescent and it's also pure swachha there are no kalankam here kalanka rahitatvate swachha chhaya asti nakana that's why he is upset now here you will find that nakavat kutila aakaraha api chandraha he is not uh, 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 um, capable of removing the suffering hence there is a difference in between the comparison the upamana and the upameya so there is a vyatreka kalankara dhvani it's not a clear it's not a vachya alankara he is only saying he is upset the hindu there is doesn't say because the nakha is a prapannarthi chida hindu is upset about it that is not clearly mentioned here you can also say that it is uh, apannuti in the sense the nakha actually if hindu hindu rupaha nakha indavaha natu nakha is also uh, understood suggested from here right so an apannuti alankara is also there where you are uh, um um uh, uh, negating the existence the reality of it and you are uh, is super imposing something upon it uh, you should remember the shloka ankange bishashankire that is an example of that uh, apannuti this is a lot of people are saying that this is an anka but uh, kalanka in the chandra but it is not i think it is that andhakara that he uh, he has adanna indoryat dalidendra neela shakala shyamandari drishyate tat sandram nishi pitam andha tamasam kukshastam achakshmahe so that is your apannuti alankara where you are negating that kalanka and you are saying it is the tamas here in the same way you are saying it is not the nakaha it is actually kintu uh, balachandra it is it is like the balachandra which doesn't have a kalanka also now in the crescent moon you know generally cannot find that uh, uh, kalanka in it hmm? that if you can understand the apannuti alankara dhvani it is fine otherwise just go with the vyatreka alankara dhvani it is very simple to understand easier the rasa dhvani that he says so why he is talking of vastu dhvani alankara dhvani and rasa dhvani because there are three categories of dhvani dhvani can be of three types vastu dhvani alankara dhvani and rasa dhvani all three are said here so he has put forth his vastu ashir namaskriya vastu nirdesho vapitan mukham is your definition for a mangala it can either be an ashirvadatmakam or a namaskriyatmakam or a vastu nirdeshatmakam where you are put forth in your your putting forth your uh, concept that you are going to talk about in the text his concept is dhvani and he is brought that here very beautifully the rasa dhvani here is um, the last type rasa dhvani is not only shringara hasya karuna veera bhayanaka etc not only those rasas which are suggested it can also be bhava vyabhijari bhava can also exist or the stai bhavas can also uh, be suggested even then even if it is bhava dhvani you still call it as uh, um, part of the rasa dhvani because rasa bhava tada bhasa and everything are included you should have read that in uh, kavi prakash so bhagavad vishayaka ratihi it is a sthayi bhava uh, um, we we see how the poet is uh, enamored by his bhakti there and he is enamored by the the form of uh, uh, drisimha he is not even talking the what was very beautiful about this is he's not talking of how, describing how uh, drisimha is he is only talking of his nails which were Uh, uh instrumental in removing hiranyakashipu from the face of the earth and uh, uh, um ridding of you know getting rid of the bhumi bhara you know such a beautiful uh, this thing so bhagavad vishaya karati he is a bhavadvani here which is the angi or the pradhanam veera rasa is your angam because he's talking of the nakha here uh, and the nakha is not capable of destroying uh, um what is that uh, uh, sorry it's even though it is nrsimha avatara which is destroying it by talking of how only the nakha is enough to destroy hiranyakashipu it's a portrayal of the veera rasam that is there in the um, in nrsimha correct right? he nrsimha does not need an army he only needs his nakha 
to get rid of the suffering of the people. Svichha kesarinaha, svachha svachhaya ayasita indavaha, trayantamvo maduripoho prapannarthi chido nakaha. Next he starts with the concept of dhvani. What is the kavyasyatma dhvaniriti budaihi yasamamnata purvaha? He will start off with that by saying what are all the different misconceptions that are there in the dhvani and how you can attack it. Okay. Any doubts? No, Oscar, it is so good 